before we get this video started, I want to give a shout out to two people. Now, those two people are Danion. Danion does death battles, kind of. And he also does Total War videos, so I would go check him out right now in the link below. And I would also check out Kinky Gaming. Kinky Gaming is someone who is almost like me, who does reviews, plays games, and he uploads almost daily. So if you're in the market for other YouTubers besides me and my stink mouth, go in and see these YouTubers. Their links are down in the description below. Bye! Shadow side, shadow side, shadow side. Yokai Watch has finally developed since Yokai Watch 3. But now that we have a new art for the anime that has come out after the movie, is it worth it to watch it again? Well, let's see. My name is the Yokai Advisor, Staggin with Dexon, and this is my review for Yokai Watch Shadow Side Art. Episode 1 So the first thing we have to start with is when we see something that I have never seen before in Yokai Watch a dark atmosphere. Now by dark atmosphere I knew that they had him in the originals with Nate and Ihano and black Yokai Watch Nate in the parallel universe if you don't remember that but they would always try to go dark but then it would be silly and this one they're just prematurely dark and then they'll add some silly undertones in it but the music and the art style fits it. So a boy is just walking down the dark dark town of Springdale and what happens is he goes in an alley and well, Ori Bancho shows up to beat him up. Now something I like about this part is that the yokai that you see, whenever something attacks a human, it is with the dark aura to make it much scarier and ominous. Also, now I see more humans can actually see yokai without the yokai watch, which is awesome. Anyways, the human gets attacked and then we get the opening. Oh man, we're gonna listen to Gara Gara Poe, man. Get let's get in that music. Do 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 Wait a minute. Where's Gara Gara Poe? Where's Gara Gara Poe? I can't I don't no. No, you can Ooh. Oh Ooh. Oh my gosh. It's Nate and Katie. So next we get explained about Boy Bancho's origin, which comes up that he's a yokai who targets bullies and bad people, sort of like an oni. And then we get to Natsume, who is walking around to her friend's detective agency, and well, who do we see? Nate, I mean, Kasuke, her little brother, following her, explaining certain things about how he doesn't believe in aliens and ghosts, and he's wondering what his sister's up to. He follows her around all the way to the house and creeps in the window to see the other gang with her. Akirno, the Shrine Temple Monk, and Toma, the bad guy turned well, Shadow the Hedgehog. They get reports about Boy Bancho, and then our first two yokai are introduced in the episode, Whisper and Michi, which Michi is just flexing, but then Katsuke gets found out and sees the yokai and freaks out, which Whisper remembers him by his look. Anyways, Michi talks about his muscles and this promotes a weird scene. <laughs> now trying to lure out Boy Bancho, they start pretending to set up a scene for Akinori. Out of all the people really, Akinori is the one. Uh, but he pretends to be a bully to Toma, which works with one woman as she's pissed off about him bullying, calls him a fatso, and puts a smelly onion in his face. They hear a scream to see Boy Bancho with the nice yokai flames there, and then we get a character that I never expected. <laughs> And also, of course, Jibanyan is the first one to transform into a shadow side. And not defeat, but beat Bori Bancho. But it was this that I noticed two points. One, that Whisper's character was pretty much changed to a good learning curve to him being a super reliable and noticing something about all our main characters. The gang. They're back. Ready and loaded. Nate. Katie, 
Bear and Eddie, they have been transformed into these guys. Anyway, spying, Katsuke sees a connection with boy Bancho. And even though he sees more yokai, the boy still doesn't believe in them. What the f As he runs away, of course, he gets suspicious of a guy who got saved by boy Bancho and sees that he's a bad guy who steals stuff like wallet and watches. So, you remember that scene where boy Bancho first attacked that kid in the open? Yeah, that's the explanation why. As Katsuke is still peeping, he gets caught by the guys and they tell him to forget what he said. Now, normally people would say okay or say nothing and well, what do you think happens to him? Well, Katsuke is persistent with work for Boy Bancho as Boy Bancho comes to his rescue. Well, Boy Bancho is better than Goku at responding to a situation at least and attacks all the guys but then a dart blower comes out of nowhere and sick the guy who is the boss in the neck, transforming him into a dark yokai. He overpowers Boy Bancho until Natsume comes around and as she is trying to summon the yokai watch, the yokai watch chooses another chosen one. Katsuke is instructed to summon Komasan and flip him to shadow side. Then Boy Bancho comes out with a body slam. Soon after that we see the backstory of Boy Bancho. He was a friend of Katsuke that actually died from a accident and became a yokai. What makes this worse is after touching the yokai, getting the medal, and understanding that his friend is a yokai, you still say, I don't really believe in yokai. What the f The next episode is The Bicycle Ridden by the Dead, which usually plays in a very effective way. So it starts again to introduce a kid and he is walking by himself. Walking, 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 and suddenly, the guy hears a bell. This kid, like, stays there for a second, looks behind him, and then gets attacked by a yokai riding a bicycle, saying, You're not the one. And to this, I thought he was killing him, but no. 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 Let's not get violent. So it starts out to introduce the yokai, which... This one goes behind people and rings bells to warn them and then sneaks up behind them and marks them with tire treads uh, shaped in an X. Now, this episode starts with Akinori going in the detective agency and then looking up about the back spirit that attacked people. But when Keisuke is found out saying he's worried about his sister, he runs out still not believing in the yokai. You just saw them three or four times today. Come on, man! Next, they interview a kid who got attacked by the yokai. And while this is happening, Katsuke is walking by himself and suddenly, the thing attacks Katsuke. Katsuke goes running through the town, goes all the way to the detective agency, and he looks really, really mangled up. And something is on his face that is not seen to the naked eye, but to the yokai watch eye tire tread shaped in an X. So, they go out through the town looking for the yokai, finding people who have been hit by the yokai, like cram schoolers and even toddlers who have been run over. Then, they meet this lady. And oh, did this lady upset me when she said that the owner who had the bike had a tragic fate. After struggling to look for this yokai, they take a wrong turn and see the smoke in the mist and see that the yokai is chasing it. And after that, Natsume, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yokai, watch. I thought Ketsuke was the chosen one. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Anyways, she summons Jibanyan, turns him into Shadow Shot Jibanyan, and they have a big battle to find out in the end that it just was a measly bike that was abandoned, just like lots of yokai. But then, just as he gets done with this sobs, guess who shows up? Yup, it's the owner, and well, that lady that you saw, she had allergies. You should have said that in the first place. Jesus. Well, it doesn't look like it gets worse for Cherry knowing that he got replaced, right? No, no, no. What, ha what happens next spirals out of control for Cherry. The guy who apparently was in the first episode who hit a dart 
and the other guy comes back to cause more havoc by putting in a dart in the kid. But it hits the wrong person and travels to Cherry. Cherry rampages like Godzilla and tries to attack Natsume in the process, but she awakens and buys enough time to summon Shadow Side Komasan. Michi and Whisper, oh, they try to help, but well. <laughs> and then Komasan drops the stone on Cherry, and Cherry turns back into normal, giving up his yokai medal. Now, besides the ending, I know Cherry will come back. I know from the fact that, you know, he's now going to be one of those annoying characters. Both of these, though, both of these episodes have an ending that is kind of mysterious for who the villain is. So the first ending happens where there is a new kid in class, and this new kid has an ominous tone and ominous look. And I'm guessing it could be this character is Azel, but I don't think it's Azel. And then in the second ending, you see the guy who blew the dart is serving that kid, confirming that, yeah, he is a yokai, even though we knew that from the first episode in the ending. But this makes it more ominous to, who is that guy? And I'm thinking that guy could be Zazzle, and the other guy could be that blue-haired guy in the movie. Because, let, let's be honest, um, that that Zazzle is a dick. He is 100% a douche, alright? He'll betray you in a minute just to get power. And if he likes man manipulating worlds, okay, that's good for him. But, um, I love this series, man. Everything about these dark, dark undertones. I'm so thankful that Yokai Watch still keeps a happy-go-lucky, funny, and joyful undertone. I love how there are so many things that allude to the old series for Yokai Watch, and I'm hoping to see more of the old characters like Maggie Hana, uh, Nate's friends, and maybe even a scene like with Nate himself, even though we saw him in the intro. Or, you, you know, we could see Grandma and Grandpa. I still want to see how Lily's attitude is, though. I also hope that Nate can see the yokai, or maybe Katie can see him too. But, you know, that's all for now. Until then, this is the Yokai Advisor, starting with the excellent signing out.